across the APIs, Salesforce GraphQL introduction. Welcome to another episode of Across the APIs, where we look at Salesforce from an integration architect standpoint and look at all the ways data move in and out of Salesforce. Today, we're taking a look at the GraphQL, a really interesting new technology that's just been around not that long, and it's a way of querying and manipulating data from outside of Salesforce. We're gonna dive in and take a look. So welcome to Across the APIs. And Salesforce has a number of different available APIs. We've been going over many of these other ones in other sessions, but we're taking a look at a really interesting one today. So if we take a look at the overall map, if you're coming in on the browser, you could be coming in, you're authenticating from the authentication server, you could be hitting an instance server, you could be hitting a digital experience or even doing web delete or web to case. That's the right side of this diagram. On the left side of this diagram, you could be a client application, which could either be a technology stack on a browser or even another server, which will then authenticate and then hit either the version web services or the non-version web services. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a look at GraphQL. And here's the URL services data with your version GraphQL. And it's one that it currently is for query. Um, it was designed by Facebook in 2012 and it became an open source project in 2015, the GraphQL interface. Um, it adds efficient data retrieval. You pick just what you need and then the system, the host system should only give you what you need. You get one endpoint to make all your queries. It's a strongly typed schema, and I'll show you some evidence of that. It does have introspection where it can query, and in subsequent videos, we'll show you examples of introspection. And it's flexible and declarative, um, so it's really powerful. We're gonna start, we're gonna introduce it today and dive deeper in subsequent sessions. Now there is an open source org for this, this graphql.org. And what I'm gonna do is to show you some of the key features on here, and then we're gonna take a look at them hitting Salesforce. So it's a query language API where you ask just for you what you want, and you'll see this isn't the exact syntax we're using, but you'll see that some in this little example, adding fields and the additional fields come through. Another key feature is that you get many resources in a single request. So to speak to Salesforce people, you can get accounts, contacts, and other unrelated objects all in a single request. So this could have been served, you know, a single query could be done through like a standard REST endpoint. This could be almost like a composite where you could be retrieving three different objects or more at the same time. Now, it's got a strongly typed system and I'll start showing you that, you know, what that means from our perspective. Um, and then of course, it's so it's a whole new technology stack, which we're gonna take a look at. So we're gonna start with this, my standard org right here, where we're looking at the org and we're gonna work in through Postman like I've done on a number of sessions. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna authenticate and we're gonna get our authentication token and then we're gonna do our standard query. So this is hitting the endpoint the query endpoint, which I've explained in, sub, in previous sessions. So we're hitting services data, that's V57, let's bump it to V58. So we're doing a query with the queue equals to select ID, name, um, and create a date from account. So from the previous call, we can put our own SQL statement, query this, and we can start seeing account records. And so this takes the SQL state, a single SQL statement and executes it using the query API. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a similar statement using the GraphQL. So if at its most basic, here is a GraphQL statement where we are going to send a query parameter with a string of query accounts. So the syntax is this is the query we're sending the word query to acknowledge that we're doing a query. We're creating a set. We're hitting the UI API, which is a particular API in Salesforce. 
So the advantage of the GraphQL is you can hit multiple endpoints all at the same time. Here, we're hitting the UI API, and we're triggering a query against account. And then using the syntax, edges and node, we're starting to ask for things. And in this case, we're asking for the name, and this will get us some data. So what we start to see is our graph, QL response graph, where it has data, UI, query, and here are the edges. And then we're going to see Homer, Acme, sample accounts. So we start to see the accounts coming back. So, okay, that's nice. But let's move on and see something more interesting. So first, what we have is Postman actually supports the GraphQL interface. And instead of doing, in this previous example, the raw, what I'm going to be doing is using the GraphQL format in Postman. And what that can do is what you're seeing is it's querying the schema automatically. So now my Postman has just queried the schema and has given me autocomplete. So right now, what we have is, and it's given me a much cleaner format. So we're seeing with the GraphQL query accounts, and now we're going to hit send. Now what we can do is I'm going to pull this syntax out just for a moment. We're going to grab this out. And we're going to be querying. We have just queried all the accounts, the same accounts in my org with the syntax. Now it looks a little more cumbersome than the standard SOCL statement that we're used to. But I'm going to start to show you some neat capabilities. So we do get autocomplete where I'm on an account object. I have the GraphQL interface here. And what I can do is get to here and start to type additional fields, such as, you know, um, the phone. And now it's auto completed because it's downloaded the schema. And I can hit the send. Now, this phone is what's called is a more complex data type. And because of that, what we need to do is to give it the brackets and go value. And now we hit send. And now it passes the validation. And you can see we're starting to actually retrieve phone values here. So we have a powerful schema in here that we can start to go and go like industry is partner. So we have all this autocomplete capabilities in here and it's being validated against the schema. The next thing we can do is we can do where clauses. So inside account, what we're going to do is I add parentheses where, and then this is a field type, type equals analyst. So this is the where clause of a SOCL statement added inside here. And now I'm going to get a single node that is a analyst, a single account that's an analyst. And we can verify that. Um, we had super cycles and we're going to edit super cycles and change its type to analyst. And now that we've done that, we can re-execute the query and we can now see super cycles is coming across. So this syntax is now allowing us to do wearers. Still, you know, nothing special yet. Um, but still, we're starting to see how we get autocomplete. We get this graph. Now what we're going to do is go to the next example. So here's our where clause, our additional field. But now we're going to start to get to the power of it. What we're going to be able to do is to query multiple objects at the same time. So what we've got is a query. We have a where clause on analyst. And now I've added a second object, a completely unrelated object, my OA airport with its ID and name. So I'm querying two different objects in the same query. And let's take a look. And now you can see I have my super cycles and I'm then starting to get OA airport and I'm starting to get that set of data. 
and that's going to come in a paginated um, amount. Now what we could do is even add a third data set. Let's come in here. Here's contact. We're going to go edges, node, and we're going to go ID. So we're going to be retrieving a list of contacts and, un and accounts and airports all in one request. So you'll see now, but let's add the name. There's my name, but I, I've learned that it needs to be with the additional value. And now let's take, oh, because name is not on contacts, first name is. And now there's Bart and there's additional names in here. So what we're seeing with the GraphQL is I can query multiple objects simultaneously and do where clauses. So this is the beginning capabilities of GraphQL, which is being able to retrieve multiple objects at the same time and get just the fields you want. So if you were doing the REST API, you'd have to retrieve your accounts, retrieve your contacts, maybe, and then retrieve your airports. Now you might be able to do accounts with contacts in a sub SQL statement, but the point is that being able to pull unrelated objects in a single query is a nice feature. We're gonna then start diving deeper and see even more capabilities of the GraphQL. But right now for query, this has some strong capabilities of multiple items and just getting what you need. So thank you for joining Great GraphQL. Join us again, same bad time, same bad channel, www.stevetechark.com and subscribe on YouTube, Steve Tech Arc. Have a great day.